One day, Bill and Ben were talking when James bustled in, looking redder than ever and very cross. Listen here, you lot. You better be fixing my train. I ain't gonna waste no time on you. Ah, you're really useful, that is, said James sarcastically, and he puffed off. Does that red rocket think he is? Old Puffer no steam, that's what I say. Maybe his brothers might teach him some sense, or they might be worse than him. Edward paused when they said that. Now listen here, you two. I've met James, I met one of James's class before, and so have most of the engines. In fact, James wasn't the first engine of his class to come here. What do you mean? Before James arrived in night in, in in maybe in the, in the twenties, there was another engine. He was different. He had red wheels instead of black. Instead of a number five, he had nothing. He was called Winston. He usually handled mine trains and sleeper trains down to the line. Down from Mitsodo to Balahu. Which one of them? Back then, new stage uh, Natford had just been had just been fixed and rebuilt. As soon as uh, they were going, there was an extra train ready to be taken down to the line. Alright, you lot, I need an engine to take the train. Would you like to take it, Winston? said Edward calmly. No, I'm good, Edward. I think it might be good if you did it. Edward smiled. But she knew that he couldn't do anything. Come on, you've got to take a train someday. Ah, I remember. Before Thomas arrived. Just like a few days ago. I was the only engine to run on the line. Hold on a tick, said Bill and Ben. I thought Eagle was the engine who came. Ah, said Edward. So you know about Eagle, you know about Winston. Well, James mentioned him a lot of times. And he said he was the first engine to arrive. Ah, well, you'll, well you'll, if you listen, you'll see what really happened. So Winston took the sleeper train down from Barrow. But unfortunately, he forgot about the wings. Of course, you've heard about um, Gordon's dumbless uh, predicament. Bill and Ben chuckled, and they remembered. Remember that wind that that pushed Gordon off, uh, pushed Gordon's dome off, off the flight dumps? Yes, of course. Well, you'll see why. What happened? It was a teasing wind, of course, only knocking things off. 
but unfortunately, you guys haven't wrecked it. This happened to lots of people. And certainly, it happened to cars and lorries. When, when Winston was going through the line, puffing like a normal, going faster since he was getting a little bit late, after, after a little sleeper train, after parts of the sleepers from his train, and coming off on the wrong station, rather than puffing. So, he went off, took the train faster and faster, but unfortunately, the wind began to catch up. So he began to feel something weird. That's odd! I feel weird. The driver looked at the pressure gauge. You're fine. But... Pause. Press it. Looks like the winds are beginning to catch up. The rocking and rolling of the engine began to go faster and faster. But soon, it became all too much for the wind. You know how planes take off, interrupted Edward. Yes, said Bill and Ben. What about them? This is exactly what happened. How our planes take off. Bill and Ben paused. How can a big engine like him take off like an airplane as slick and modern as today? Well, the winds began to pick up under his wheels. Soon they began to move up and up. Soon, while his frame was moving on the ground, he began to feel like he was moving upwards. The wind had picked him up. And, uh, but only for a few seconds, a few seconds. After that, he crashed into a field. Anyway, people called him Eagle. Because he was Soaring like an eagle, said the fat controller. I expected more from you, Winston. Winston squirmed and hoped he didn't. The fat controller pondered off. While they were fixing up cranes to rescue the engine. When Winston returned the when Winston returned from the works the next night, all the engines had heard about his accident. Well, Lily was the first to talk. Come now, Winston. I didn't expect such clumsiness from you. Well this wasn't really clumsiness, said Winston. It was more of a Or it's more of a wind accident, if you get my meaning. Bill and Ben paused for a second. So that's what happened. Edward didn't say nothing. He just laughed. Yes. But what happened to Winston? Edward sighed and uh, went and turned his face turned turned red. Obsessed. The war needed more, uh, as mo as much engines as they needed. So they took Winston. They drafted him in the war. Which one? Well, two or one? It was two, actually. After that, Winston never returned. On the news, me and all the other engines were waiting. It said it had been bombed. Bombed? How could an engine get bombed? Well, there was not really no Germans there. Unfortunately, it was his own train. What do you mean? One of his vans, up full, of, full of military goods and explosives, had actually caught on fire because of, because of how hard he was working. Some, some soot and some smoke, as well as some ash and some sparks, set the train alight. A light. Luckily, his drive, his fireman uncoupled, and his driver drove Winston all the way from the station. But unfortunately, the signal box had been destroyed as well. Luckily, the signal box was, was uninjured. But, but the two, but the two brave heroes died. Bill and Ben paused. So now you know why James the Cyberad is not all of his class. Besides, he was fighting in a war himself. Ah. I remember. Donald and Douglas told us that story. A war engine, was he? Hmm. 
The next few days, everything was back to normal. No one mentioned the red engine, not even mentioned an eagle. But luckily, 